uh, climate factors. Now, climate is different to culture. We've, several people said you know, managers should create a culture or leaders should you know, support a culture. And that's all well and good. But you know, for those who have tried to change a culture or have moved organisations or have listened to Mike Brocklehurst about culture, is that it's really intractable. It's hard to get a handle on. What is it? How do you measure it? And the jury is out, actually, about whether you can change it. It's often a generational thing. Yeah, so for all those reasons, we can't only focus on culture. So you start arm waving. It's hard to actually figure out what the culture is and close to impossible to change that culture in any short time. And that's also relevant to our case study. So rather than only looking at culture, which is one of the important factors, we step back and higher up, and we look down on that and say, well, we're going to call this climate. And by definition, climate is something which is not easy, but easier to sort of measure, assess, are they doing this? Are they doing that? So it focuses on practices, yeah? And then it tries to make sense about what the implications of those practices are. Okay? Things that managers can observe and they can influence, because otherwise you're not managing innovation. You're just observing it. And a lot of culture is, even if you figure out what it is, you're just observing it, like a car crash. Yeah? And it's like the early studies on culture are like that. It's like anthropology. You go and observe people doing stuff, and you say, well, this is a so-and-so culture. I can't do much about it, and I don't know whether it works, but I can classify it. And in terms of managing it, we need to go beyond classification and beyond trying to change it. So climate, by definition, is based on practices and behaviours rather than culture, which is more about beliefs and thoughts, which are very hard to even you know, understand, let alone change. So we're going to have a focus on organisation, but in particular, organisation, what we're calling climate factors. Yeah? Things based on behaviours and practices rather than some abstract belief system. OK. Um, and some ways of thinking about this, I'm not worried, do not worry about the terminology. It's the principle that, that when we look at the case study, OK? The terminology doesn't matter. But the principle is that you can begin to look at practices and behaviours and then make judgments about, is that destructive? Is it constructive in terms of innovation? Do we have too much of that practice, too little of that practice? So it's a behaviour and practice base which is more amenable to measurement and it's more amenable to management, okay? unlike culture. So some of the ways of putting dimensions on this, I'm not going to go through all this, um, but the, the way of thinking about dimensions is that they are different. You know, they differentiate them. You know, if they're too similar, we collapse them into one. So it's a bit like when we spoke about QFD. Yeah? You sometimes have to drill up, sometimes have to drill down. A bit like fracking, OK? Um, so I'm not going to go through these, but give you um, um, a random example. Um, trust and openness. That's a nice motherhood statement. Trust and openness. Yeah, how, how can that possibly be a bad thing? Well, let's go back to our universal diagram. Yeah? Our universal diagram tells us that too little of trust and openness. Yeah? So if we have, if you like, um, none, very bad pen, and we have total, OK, we have some scale, which may be qualitative, it may be numerical, depending on how clever you want to get. But you get the idea that we try to assess it in some way. And like almost every one of those dimensions, you get that inverted U shape, yeah? Sort of curvy linear thing. So for trust and openness, if you have too little trust and openness, you get low levels of innovation. Yeah? Why is that? Why is that? If you have low levels of trust in an organisation, you get very low le levels of innovation. What's the mechanism? Why do you think that is? Sorry? Not so much motivation. It's a separate variable. It's about trust at the moment, which is quite, a f it's quite hard to measure, but you can measure it. Most times, the process of innovation could start with silly ideas. Yeah. So you want to be able to get, say out a silly idea without being judged or... Dead. Like an MBA class. <laughs> 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 Not this one, a, a sort of abstract, <laughs> abstract example. You're exactly right, yeah. So one element of trust is the ability to um, air ideas or concepts that may be fragile, they're not fully developed, mm -hmm. share them with your colleagues, get feedback, yeah? and not get shot down in flames or derided or mocked. Yeah? So that's one element. Yeah? So if you have low levels of trust, you're less willing to share those concepts and ideas. So you're keeping them to yourselves. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to 
take the mickey because it's not well thought out. You're going to criticise and it's a very fragile and I personalise it. So that's a very good example. Any other reasons why low levels of trust? Yeah. I mean, obviously, control. Yeah. What, what you're supposed to think about, what you're supposed to suggest, what kind of ideas are expected. I mean, there was this kind of discussion going on here. Yeah. And, and I mean, if, if you don't, I mean, it's a Russian saying, isn't it? Trust yeah. is good, but control is better. So obviously, <laughs> I mean, you, yeah. get, you get very polarised thinking. Yeah, and that's more like that's more like your earlier inversion. We talked about empowerment. That's the first first yes. version of that graph, if you remember. The same idea. You know, empowerment's different to trust, but it is a function of trust. You know, I'm willing to empower you if I trust that you're going to do something worthwhile. And that's different to the sharing and opening in. But it's another attribute. Low levels of trust. I'm not going to devolve responsibility or let you do stuff. I'm going to micromanage you. Yeah. And too much. I don't think it's well, yeah, let's move on to the other. So they're the sorts of reasons why down here not much happens, yeah, with my very bad pen. Um, the dash behind stage there, see if there's any better. Um, got your 3D glasses. Red and, OK. Uh, <laughs> multimedia presentation. Um, on the other extreme, how can you have too much trust? This is a crazy idea, crazy Anglo-Saxon idea. How can you have too much trust? Should we do a trust-building exercise? No, let's not. OK. What, why do you think very high levels of trust, for different reasons, are also associated with low levels of innovation? People experiment too much. Sorry? People experiment too much. They do what too much? They experiment with ideas too much or innovation. Oh, yeah, a bit like the lack of focus. Is there's too much going on. People, yeah, if you take the too much empowerment, if you like, is that we're allowed to do anything? Which is not far off academics, actually. But, you know, you don't have to do almost anything until you sort of hang yourself. So, yeah, you basically get lots and lots of, I wouldn't call it experimentation, but random walks around, yeah, and no control or direction or responsibility, like R&D, yeah. In the environment, you know, your boss is too much trust. Yeah. You know, the, they, they tend to pay no attention, you know, like a sit back and you just let you, you know, freelance almost. Yeah. I think you need a uh, you know, good amount of attention, you know. Yeah. That's a, that's a different observation. See, one is about this randomness, yeah? The other, that's a different observation. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier about things like sponsorship, senior management involved. That's more about, you know, somebody's watching me, I'm responsible for this, things are expected of me. And that's different, so you're right, that's a hierarchical thing. So that's another dimension where you could have too much or too little. I would say, I mean, it, it was where I said, it's abuse. Yeah? You know, you, it's like a system and you know that you can go away with it, and yeah. actually you can make it the same. What about, let, let's, drill, let's drill down a little bit from the organisational level to, say, a group dynamic. So a lot of projects, development projects are in groups. Could, how can you have too much trust in a group? If you don't have, if you have too much trust, you don't have challenge. Without challenge, you'll lose the ability yeah. to innovate. Yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, we've, we've unpacked it because it has a separate explanatory um, power. It's such a, you're dead right, conflict, constructive conflict in debate, within the context of trust, which goes back to your point, is that you can have arguments, and to outsiders it feels like, my God, that was so unpleasant, yeah? Um, and yet, it's in the spirit of getting something better. Now, that's very different, very different to having, if you like, two high levels of trust, where people don't debate in conflict, because the social process have overtaken, yeah? So it's completely different, it becomes dysfunctional, that people don't challenge, I think, yeah, I trust you, you're a clever guy, or I've worked with you for 20 years. Fine, if you think, we'll go with it, yeah? There's no sort of, well, how would that work in a constructive way rather than deriding people. So too much trust by different mechanisms, you get a similar endpoint, yeah? And you find that if you go through these, you get very similar relationships. So the trick is often of one of calibration. Now, where are we? Do we have, yeah, too little, or do we have too much? And so, therefore, what sort of practices do we need to either discourage or encourage? And that's not about culture, because culture is much trickier to play around with. That's more about beliefs and, and values. And they're hard to identify and change. But this is, in a sense, lends itself more to saying, well, actually, there's too much trust in social processes now. We want to back off a bit, and we want a bit more structural direction. Yeah? That's something you can do as a manager. And that's why we think climate is a better way of discussing these organisational factors than things like culture uh, and such like, because you can... Uh, intervenes a bit strong, but you can influence often quite strongly behaviours and practices. Whereas you're really not going to change people's beliefs in most most cases, other than by hiring or firing. Yeah. So what I'd like us to do.